uh, calculate the work done by a variable force. If uh, the work is constant, then and the direction of motion is constant, then the work is just force times the displacement times the uh, cosine of the angle between the uh, force and the displacement. We're not allowed to do the calculation of work equals force times displacement if the work is variable. So we have to use the tools of calculus to do this. So we're going to investigate the situation where the variable force is described as 8x cubed. So as x changes, the uh, force is going to change. Um, we want to let a 3 kilogram object move from x equals 0 to x equals 3 meters. So to calculate the work done, we'll have to use the tools of calculus, the antiderivative, and take the antiderivative from, of f of x dx from a, a lower limit of x1 to an upper limit of x2. Well, this is pretty direct. We have the f of x given to us, 8x cubed. The lower limit is 0 meters. The upper limit is 3 meters. The 8 can be pulled out of the antiderivative as a constant. x cubed dx, the antiderivative process, changes the power to a 4. We go up one integer in the power, and we divide by that new power. Then we must evaluate this expression for the uh, upper and the lower limits. So sorry about the focus kind of going in and out here. So if we do that, pretty easy. Uh, we put in a 3, and I've, I've factored out the 4. Uh, so 8 divided by 4 gives a 2 out in front. And then the upper limit, 3 to the 4th, lower limit, 0 to the 4th. If we put in 3 to the 4th, we get 81. Multiply that by 2, we get 162 joules. That's the amount of work done in this uh, motion from 0 meters to 3 meters. And if you, if you come back here and notice the problem, um, when x is equal to 0, the force is 0. Uh, how would you calculate uh, work over a 3 meter distance with 0 force? You get 0. That's the wrong answer. And if uh, you put in 3 here, uh, x cubed, that'd be 27 times 8. That's some big number um, we won't bother with. But putting that times 3, that'd be incorrect. That force of this large force times 3 meters because that force value is not uh, active for the 3 meter distance. So you have to use the tools of calculus to get a correct value of the work done for a variable force. Now just kind of a side question, uh, what's the final velocity of this object? This is the only place we need the mass. Uh, the final velocity can be determined by using the concept that work is the change of kinetic energy if our potential energy is constant. So we have the work number, 162 joules, 1 half 3 kilograms for the uh, object and v squared, 1 half mv squared is the kinetic energy. The initial velocity was 0, so 0 kin kinetic energy initially. Multiply both sides by 2, divide both sides by 3. We get 108 is the square of the final velocity. We then must take a square root, and we come up with a final velocity of 10.4 meters per second. So when you have a variable force, you must do this antiderivative to come up with the correct work. The place where the mass comes in is not in calculating the work, but the mass is needed if you want to know the final velocity. So keep practicing with that and ask your instructor some questions.